Oh, I am so excited for this one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Concept Soup PC building channel. I'm going to tell you why I'm so excited. Because I finally managed to put together a system with the i3 12100F. And now you're thinking, why is he getting so excited over an i3? i3 is the bottom of the barrel. It's all the. Shut your mouth, all right? The 12100F is an absolute gaming beast. It's 4 core 8 thread, but that doesn't mean you have to hold it back, baby. It's an absolute beauty. And you're going to see why when we come to the performance later. This is going to be a build, right? That is absolutely meta. This is a meta build. You want to play some esports gaming. You want to dabble in a bit of 1440p gaming too. My gosh, it's hard to do better than this. And you're really starting now in the market with the prices dropping on the GPUs, finally going to be able to find this stuff in stock, finally going to be able to build it. Oh, it's so, it's so exciting. And the excitement will continue with our sponsor. See you on the other side of that for a parts list, build charge and test time. Bye bye and I'll see you in a minute. This video is brought to you in partnership with jcpccustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? We've got three methods. We have the ready to go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss free experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number and any other acoustic that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere just yet. Quick one, I've got a discount code for you for jcpccustoms.com. Use code YTFREE at checkout. You get free shipping on anything on the website. That includes PCs. So that's like a £30 saving right there. Anyway, on with your regularly scheduled content. All right, dudes, thanks for sitting through that. Parts list time, parts list time, CPU, i3-12100F, the 4-core 8-thread beast, the saviour of budget PC gaming. Now, I got this 12100F at about £102, I think, which is pretty nice. The i3-10105F, and get those for about 80 quid, so it's about 20 quid more, but you do get a lovely, lovely bump in performance. And the other nice thing about the 12th gen is it comes with the new Intel stock cooler, which does look a little bit nicer. Motherboard, we're using the MSI Pro B660M-A DDR4 version. Reason is, uh, I got these actually bundled with some other stuff, but it's a nice motherboard. I'm quite a big fan of these MSI Pro boards, like the B550-A and the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, because they give you like the important things, like decent VRMs, decent compatibility on memory and um, decent RGB, all these other kind of features. They just they just don't look spectacular, but they've got the fantastic performance under the hood, which is really important for guys that are trying to save a bit of money. So the MSI Pro B660M-A, nice board this actually, and I'd even trust, you know, a 12600K in this board wouldn't be uh, a foolish, uh, a fool's errand either. So a good choice here. Memory wise, we've got 16 gigs, two lots of eight, DDR4 3600, Corsair Vengeance. Oh yes, Corsair Vengeance, baby. And this Vengeance RAM is going to look pretty dang sweet as well. And the reason we went there for this is it's only about £5 more than the non-RGB equivalent. So let's get some lighting in there. Let there be light, as the great man once said. Storage-wise, uh, we have 500GB NVMe SSD. So this is an ADATA SX8200 Pro. Probably one of the best... Um, Gen 3 drives actually. I got these on a really good deal, about 40 quid each. Um, we probably can't get it at this price anymore. So just pick up any 500 gigabyte uh, NVMe SSD from a brand that you recognize and you'll be absolutely laughing. Gonna have room for between four and eight games depending on how large those games are. But you know, if you need more storage, just bump that sucker up to a terabyte. Easy, easy, easy times. Now the video card, this is where it starts to get fun because we've got the RX 6600 eight gigabyte. Now, this card, you can pretty much always find it in stock. Past couple of weeks, it's always been there, and the price is dropping quite nicely. So you, you're going to be getting these for around 360 quid before you know it. And at that price, it does make a bit more sense. So you're sort of 
The 6600 is, you know, you're hitting sort of an RTX 2060 levels, 2060 super levels. So, you know, you're having happy days here with this graphics card. It's absolutely plenty for most gamers. Um, it's going to pair really nicely with that 12100F because it does run on PCIe Generation 4 as well. The case, we've gone for a budget case here, trying to keep that cost right down. So this is the CIT Pyro ARGB. Um, it's made by CIT. Um, places, other places that you buy it, because it's like an OEM brand, uh, they might put their own brand on it. So they might say, oh, it's made by us, but actually it's just an OEM and they've put their label on it. But either way, it's a cheap case, all right? It's not the best case out there. It comes with an RGB fan on the back. There's not much airflow. There is a little pocket of airflow on the front to allow some air to go through. So we'll slap a fan on that to try and push some through. But again, we're running sort of budgety type build here. So we don't want to spend loads of money on basically what is aesthetics. Um, and I think this pyro doesn't look too bad. So I'm not going to say go out and buy a really ugly case to save money. Come on, guys. There's got to be a bit of a compromise, a bit of back and forth between us. Um, so that's why the pyro was a good choice here. But really, any case that you want is going to fit this. So crack on with whatever you want. Power supply, 650 watt Corsair CXF. So this is the RGB um, power supply. Now, RGB power supply, completely pointless. Um, the reason I have this one, I've got an overstock of these. I got Corsair CXFs on a like a like an unreal price, by the way. Like 550 watt models, like 25 quid, 650 watts. I was getting them for about 35 quid. So at the time I was like, yeah, load me up, baby. Give me all those power supplies because that is cheap. So that's why I've got them here. But really, any 650 watt uh, bronze, 600 watt bronze, anything that or better will be absolutely fine for this kind of spec. We're going to install Windows 11 Pro on this. So all our builds going forward are going to be 11, Windows 11. We've got a nice uh, AC 1200 megabits per second Wi-Fi adapter PCIe. And we're going to use a USB Bluetooth to provide the Bluetooth. Now, the nice thing about this MSI board is that you're going to be able to control the RGB using MSI Center, so you don't have to use any case buttons or anything finicky like that. You just use the app. So that's the parts list done. Let's build it up in a little sped up montage, as you like to see on the channel, and then we will see the end result. We'll try it out in some games, and we'll just see, is this going to be the new banger, the budget banger combination? See you in a minute. Bye-bye now. Now, considering this was a cheap, cheap case, about £36, I think I paid for this, it doesn't look half bad, does it? Come on, guys. It looks pretty dang nice. Um, you've got that nice RGB sort of pattern on the front, which isn't too obnoxious. You've got a little pocket to allow some air through. It's not a fantastic airflow system, of course, but it's, it's certainly doable for this build. 
I've got an RGB fan on the back for a bit of bling as well, and that's going to sort of marry up it with our uh, Corsair RGB RAM to give it a bit of a bit of flair, a bit of style. Um, they do have that thing with the micro ATX board in a full ATX case where some people don't really like the look of it, but there are ways to get around that. So you can see how um, on the wiring I've done it here. So I've made sure I've really, all those front panel connectors and all that that goes along the bottom, I've really tried to tighten them down as much as possible so that you don't have that horrible thing with all the wires like sticking up out of the, out of the bottom compartment there. You sort of wrap them to the side instead um, and that gives it a bit of a cleaner look so it's not as noticeable. But I must say, guys, for a budget build, uh, you could do worse than having it look like this. I mean, it is pretty dang nice. Um, and speaking of nice, we're going to be moving on to the performance where we've had a bit of a turn up for the books here. So let's go through what we've got. So um, CPU temperature test to start with. Now, this is where the news isn't quite as good. So we run Prime 95, which is a pretty beastly torture test. Our maximum temperature did hit 100 degrees C. And now on an i3... That's not ideal, but but this is Prime 95 we're talking about here, which is an absolutely mental torture test. You're never going to put your computer under this kind of load. It stresses not only the CPU, but the memory controller as well. Um, and remember, this is a maximum temperature, so it probably just spike to 100 for half a second and then come down. When you ignore those kind of big spikes like that, you've got around 89 degrees as a sustained high temperature, which again is not ideal, but it's not awful, because remember in games, you're not going to be really hammering the CPU quite this much. And we'll be able to see the actual CPU temperature in games when I show you the real testing later on. The video card maximum temperature is 66 degrees C, pretty much what I'd expect. The 6600 uh, graphics card doesn't actually use very much power, so 66 degrees C is, is pretty sensible for this. And that's well below any kind of thermal throttling threshold. The only problem I did have using this graphics card was that the fan profile that came pre-installed was god awful. You just as soon as it hit like 55 degrees, the fans went up to like 100%. So I had to run MSI Afterburner um, and put on a custom fan curve, which still kept those temperatures nice and cool, but without the massively noisy fans going off all the time. I don't know what they were thinking setting that fan curve in, in the factory. It was just, I was like, this is completely wrong. So we changed it. But that said, Benchmark tests, Heaven Benchmark, FPS average of 130.7 with a score of 3292. That makes it actually nearly twice as good as the 6500 XT, which is the next one down in the stack, which shows that if you do have that little bit of extra money to spend it, it does go a long way with a score of 3292 as well. And this puts it in that sort of mid, mid, sort of lower mid sort of area of scores that we tend to see in this application. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p highest preset in the benchmark. Average FPS was 105, and that's pretty nice. That's a pretty good benchmark of, you know, if you're going to run a game at its max maximum presets, then if you're running at 1080p, you're going to have actually still decent performance. But what about some real gaming? Let's move on to a bit of the old Fortnite. So playing a bit of Fortnite, and what a turn up for the books this is, because we have in excess of 300 FPS, um, which you haters on the i3s, oh, you're going to be eating your words now because it just goes to show that really single core performance is as if not more important than core number of cores. Because, you know, if we took something like, you know, a six core from, you know, a few years ago, there's no way it would be hitting this kind of FPS. So it just goes to show you can have good performance and our CPU temperatures as as expected in real gaming you're hitting more like in the mid 70s which is pretty much plumb normal for stock cooler operation moving on now apex legends is the next uh, game of choice and in this we're getting around 155 fps and again fan dabba dozy tastic for you guys playing on a 1080p 144 hertz monitor and I suspect if you put this game onto 1440p resolution, you'd probably not see much difference in the FPS as well. So it's not, you know, a case of, oh, I have to buy a 1080p monitor for this. You could run some 1440p on this. Just make sure you're tweaking your settings. So, you know, using this i3, this 6600, these are parts that you can buy, at least in the UK, you can buy fairly readily. You're going to be able to put yourself something together that's really nice and not going to break the bank, which is something I've not been able to say for a long time. So that's why this is so exciting to me. But that's going to bring us to the end of the video. What did you guys think? I want to see your comments down below. I want to see your like. I want to see your subscribe. I want to see you suggest maybe something different. You might have changed something in this build. 
um, that I'd chosen. I really want to hear about it. I love the discussion. I love the chat. So see you later and get out of here, you little brat.